what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back it's your boy terabyte reacts over the top of my head don't look too bad you know what i'm saying still growing out the hair anyways guys thank you guys so much man for all of you guys that sign up for membership of course um i appreciate y'all i really do um and we're back for another episode of the soprano so what i'm going to be doing is for the next um i don't know if i'm gonna do this i want to do these episodes one by one i was going to do double uploads but i said you know what let me keep it one and one and i'm saying single episodes because these episodes are really long and they are what it is they are one hour episodes so i think that would be okay so in this session i am going to attempt to do the final seven episodes of season one hopefully i can make it because um hopefully it keeps me entertained enough to do it um because tomorrow is another big day of recording and i have a ton of stuff that i want to get out before um the week begins officially on the channel um because right now as i'm recording this i think there's only one or two things that are running on the channel um so i want to get the tv shows done consistently going on the channel so i want to finish up sons of anarchy as well and i want to have the sopranos and nirvana in fire running on the channel at the same time i don't know how much love nirvana in fire is going to get because it's one of those shows that not a lot of people know about it it is a chinese drama show so i don't i i really don't know you know how much love it's going to get you know what i'm saying once it hits the channel it's not something i'm planning to put on early access either so it's kind of like it's going to be one of those shows um that's going to prepare, premiere on the channel that's going to be let's see how it does I would love if you guys check it out once it's out you guys that are watching sopranos i would really really appreciate if you, if you guys actually check out nirvana in fire once it hits the channel i really appreciate you guys if you check that out if you guys are not into chinese drama that's fine i'm just asking you just check it out if you don't like it you don't like it but i think it's pretty i think it's a pretty good show um so you guys can you know it was suggested to me a while back and i decided to check it out and it surprised me in many ways and you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna lie the women ain't too bad to look at you know what i'm saying the women are not too bad to look at you know what i'm saying chinese women are beautiful women just as much as any other women in the world you know from around the world you know what i'm saying so um check it out i would really appreciate if you guys do that show with some support let me know if you like it if you don't like it you don't like it it is what it is it's not gonna be i don't expect it to blow up on youtube you get what i'm saying because literally i would i think i'm the first person because i've looked up nirvana in fire reactions on youtube like literally nobody people has reviewed the show but nobody has really reacted to the show you get what i'm saying so um so it'll be a first for me to react to something that nobody else has ever reacted to on youtube so it's gonna be cool so make sure you check that out i would really appreciate it for all you members out we're just going to jump in membership guys you guys can go and sign up for membership it's only a dollar 99 to see a lot of the stuff that i do early on there's a lot of exclusive shows and stuff like that that i'm planning to put on early access in the in the upcoming month that is going to just be on early access it's not going to be released on the channel anytime soon so make sure that you you can sign up and you can suggest for something you want me to watch as well a lot of the suggestions has come in i've seen them so don't worry don't worry i've seen the suggestions i'm going to plan accordingly um, according to the ones that were suggested the most and make sure i let you guys know when those are going to be released um for early access okay so we're gonna jump in season one episode seven of the sopranos let's go bruh 
Come on, stand up on your feet. Let's go. Come on. Whoa. Man, I don't feel so good. I don't want any excuses. Mr. Meskimen, I gotta go to the bathroom. Is that alcohol on your breath? No, oh, no. <laughs> You sure it was them? They were drunk in gym class. Byron Barber vomited all over the teacher. I didn't even drink. I spat now. Anthony. On top of this, you're gonna lie to me now? He's very sorry, Father Hagee, and he's gonna be even sorrier when he gets home. Anthony, why don't you wait outside? He's suspended for three days. Well, at least let me pay for the wine. Theft of the sacramental wine is not just a crime against property. This is an affront to our holy sacristy. I've asked Dr. Galani, he's our school psychologist, to join us. He's been keeping an eye on Anthony, meeting with his teachers. Why don't you pick it up from there, doctor? Um, hi. In many respects, Anthony is a normal, healthy eighth grader. Sister Patricia, his art teacher, thinks he shows strong skills and spatial orientation. But the thing is, though, and it's not just this one incident, Anthony sometimes has trouble following the rules, weighing consequences. At times, doesn't think before he acts. And it's thought that there's a good possibility Anthony could be ADD. ADD? I'm sorry, attention deficit disorder. I knew it. I always knew there was something. Well, what is it? It's an aggregate of symptoms. Inattention, impulsivity, sometimes, although not always, hyperactivity. Of course, to be sure, we'll need to give him a thorough evaluation. All he needs is a whack upside the head. If he's got an illness, it's an illness, right? If you would hit somebody who's sick, you'd hit somebody with polio. You hit Anthony? Nobody gets hit in our house. Not exactly my idea. I don't know what the world's coming to if you can't do a little tarantella on the kids every once in a while when they step out of line. So what happens now? He'll be given a complete battery of testing. Psychological, behavioral, medical. Let me ask you a question. These other kids, you keeping an eye on them? Are you testing them? The ones that are named Soprano? There's no immediate plans for that. We attend every child at Verbum Day according to his own special set of circumstances. And so what do we, as the parents, do? Nothing? Oh, no, I mean, Anthony's misbehaved. He should be consequenced. Who the hell says stuff like that? Like, he's misbehaved. He should be consequenced. What? <laughs> what? I bet that gym teacher should have ripped when your little friend puked on his boots, huh, Anthony? Hell you in this one. Him and his little crew. They used to steal lobsters on the see, boat. You see, you see this? And sell them for a buck a piece down on Bloomfield Avenue. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. And this is probably the reason why... Um. All right. Let me rephrase. This is what I'm talking about in the last couple of episodes where, where I was talking about was th stuff that was happening with Meadow. When I said... There are just some things that kids don't need to know. This is a need-to-know situation that these idiots are sitting at the table not understanding what this could mean for you telling, uh, telling Anthony right now or saying these things in front of him. This does not let... This is not going to make him be better. You, you telling him what I used to be as a kid encourages the kid... To continue to misbehave because he's going to think, oh, my father did it. So that simply means that I can do it. Or they're saying, oh, they shouldn't be too harsh on him because he did this one deed. It doesn't work like that. You're still, even though you did something stupid, the fact still remains you did something stupid. You get what I'm trying to say? So talking about all of this stuff and you're smiling you get what I'm saying? And they're making it seem like, oh, it's okay because he did. I, I'm not saying that Anthony did something that's like way over the top that any other kid m might have never taught to do. It's not what I'm trying to say. But I'm saying 
they want him to be consequenced for it and he should be <laughs> i don't know about the whole add stuff because i don't think the whole add stuff man it's a uh... really how many times do i gotta say this i don't want that kind of talk in front of this kid that stuff is wrong and i don't condone it yeah sure who do you think you're yelling at what you stupid what did you just say i didn't say anything what's he doing now what what's going on oh he yells at me like i miss it all well, this could wait till after dinner. But your father and I have talked. You are not to play Mario Kart or go skateboarding for three weeks. And no TV. No. And you are not going to sit on that internet either. And every day, you're going to ride your Why are you crying now? I'm at home and visit Grandma. Oh, well, I'll be nice. It's not fair. Really? You get up like that, pushing away cheer and all and, and day, huh? you gotta be kidding me bro maybe i don't want to admit there's something wrong with my kid but this all sounds like bullshit to me what do you mean if he's got a disease why they tell me to punish him doesn't that sound like bullshit add is a controversial subject is it a disease or, or is it a way for these psychologists to line their pockets Many children can really benefit by professional intervention. He got in a little trouble. So you don't consider his behavior out of the norm? No. I don't know. What do I know about it? What do you mean? Oh, I got to spell it out for you? Do you see his behavior as a reflection of your own? Look, like I said, ma maybe I don't want to admit there's something wrong, but, you know, if he's got this thing, we'll deal with it. If you have polio, we deal with it. You pick up the pieces and you go on from there. So that's what we're going to do. Every time something happens with a kid, they do something... It, they want to diagnose them with something and give them pills. <laughs> well, last time you uh, were telling me that you had intimate feelings for him, but you've not mentioned it. Intimate feelings? I think I said I was in love. How are you doing with it? Uh, I just can't turn off my feelings because you tell me it's a byproduct of therapy. I never said you should turn off your feelings. Well, I already got a girlfriend. Russian. 24. <sighs> How old are you? <laughs> I find it interesting that it took you so long to tell me that you had a girlfriend. How are you doing with it? <laughs> Tony, such. I ask you one more question about my son. Do you think I should go easy on him now or press him a little harder? Well, that's difficult to say. You want to raise? Maybe figure this out. Shh. Done. Nineteen sixty-seven. Made me think about my father. What about him? First time I ever saw him whack the shit out of somebody. What made you think about that? Something to do with my son, I think, you know, what's been going on. Why did your father whack the shit out of some guy? I never saw him do something like that. I mean, he used to whack us kids around a little bit. Really? Yeah, the belt was his uh, favorite child development tool. This was different, though. You could tell he knew what he was doing. How did you feel about your father after that? I didn't want him to do it to me. Seriously. What do you want me to say? I was glad he wasn't a fag. How did you and your father get along? Good. He was a good guy, my father. Everybody liked him. He knew how to have a good time. Loved shellfish. Clams, oysters. 
Taught us kids how to eat them. You put a little Worcester on there, you know, you suck them down. <laughs> Good. My mother never ate anything raw. But he wasn't around much. What did he do for a living? He'd tell me them provisions. That old numbers. Extortion, loan sharking. How did you feel about that? How did I feel? About your father being engaged in illegal activities. Well, I, you know, I never really knew about it. When did you find out? Who remembers? What you thought of that incident this morning? Are you concerned that your son is going to find out about you? Don't start talking to me about the <laughs> business. What about chemical companies? Dumping all that shit into the rivers and they get all these deformed babies popping up all over the place. Does he know anything? I don't know. Has he asked you? No. How are you going to handle that? I don't know. Did you ever talk to your father about it? What are you kidding? Could you? <laughs> You're home. You know, it's bad. The ADD, they put Anthony in special ed. say that? Uh, doctors don't know anything yet. They just started the testing. This they put you in special ed for ADD? Are you serious? Time. Listen to this. Approximately 50% of children diagnosed with ADD receive help from special education teachers in their school. Come on, we don't even know that's what he's got. You're right. Let's just be ignorant. Why worry about anything now? You blame me, don't you? You said anything about that? No, go ahead. You blame me. I blame myself. For what? For what? For staying with me? I have two eyes. Huh. And who do we blame our daughter on? Straight A student. National Honor Society. Featured soloist in the choir. Well, this isn't going anywhere. Like father, like son, right? What about daddy's little girl? What about you? You and your Uncle Lenny, that old bots. My son's got that in his gene pool. Do I blame you for that? If it helps you. <laughs> they sent me to a psychiatrist all morning. I took like a million tests. A psychiatrist? Yeah, you know, because I got suspended and everything. They sent you to a psychiatrist? But that's crazy. That's all nonsense. That's nothing but a, a racket for the Jews. Dad goes. He does not. Yes, he does. He does not. Yes, he does. To a psychiatrist? Yeah. He does not. Oh, God. Why do you say that? That's ridiculous. Because it's true. I heard him and Mom talking about it. What does he need a psychiatrist for? Now that she knows, she's probably going to tell Junior. Oh man! His mother. That's what he's doing. Oh God! He talks about me. He complains. She didn't do this. She did that. Yeah. Oh, I gave my life to my children on a silver platter, and this is how he repays me. <laughs> what? <laughs> noise. It's a flat tire. I asked you to clean those nails out of the driveway, didn't I? I was praying for something like this. Spent too much money on braces for two years. Not to take you to the dentist now. Yeah, maybe we should call the auto club. We change tires at our house. Watch and learn. Yesterday with the psychologist. How'd that go? Okay. Yeah? What'd you guys do? He made me look at these, like, pictures and stuff. And then I had to say something about them. Well, what'd you talk about? Anything interesting? Well, that's kind of between me and my therapist. You know, he told me I didn't have to say anything if I didn't want it. That's what we pay extra for at that school? Anthony, 
Anthony, the other night at dinner, you made a remark. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Don't worry about it. I'm not mad. I just need to know what you meant by it. I didn't mean anything. Come on. Some kids at school said some stuff. What'd they say? That you were in the mafia. What do you think? I don't know. There were all those guys at Uncle Jackie's funeral, and those other guys writing down license plate numbers and taking pictures. Those were feds, right? Just like in Godfather 1. Uncle Jackie's funeral. Right. And then I was on the web, and I found this page with Uncle Jackie on it. And it said he ran some union that ripped off these pension things or something. Uncle Jackie was a complicated man. But you loved him, right? Yeah. You didn't see me on that web thing, did you? No. That's right. All right, come on. Me, my father. It's probably in the genes, right? You know, this ADD thing? It's probably all genetic. But what about pussy? He's an acquaintance of mine. <laughs> this guy is a stone gangster, and he's got three kids. One who graduated, and two who are going to Villanova. How do you account for that? Then you got Leopold and Lowe. They cornhole and murdered this kid for fun, and their father was a successful businessman, a fucking millionaire. Do you hold your father responsible for what you've become? Yeah, sometimes I think about what life would have been like if my father hadn't gotten mixed up in the things he got mixed up in. Our life would have been different. Maybe I'd be selling patio furniture in San Diego or whatever. We were talking last time about how you felt when you became aware of your father's criminal life. Do you have any more thoughts on that? When you first started therapy, you said that you had this dream about those ducks. They flew away with your penis. It was a bad <laughs> omen that something was going to happen in your family. Is this the terrible thing? Look, if you know something, please, quit fucking around. I think it's important to remember. You said you like the History Channel. He who doesn't understand history is doomed to repeat it. She said what? She was high strung, my mother, very dramatic. And every night to her, the night of the opera. I could stick this fork in your eye! Oh my god! She wasn't gonna do it. But she said it! <laughs> Bro. On account of where they were going. Where were they going? I found out a couple of Sundays later. The toll now stands at 11 dead and 600 wounded, as well as hundreds of businesses set of Mom, I'm going and to the CYO to play ball. Take a bat with you. What they're doing on Springfield Avenue. Looting. Oh, he snuck out and went with him. <laughs> Where was he taking her? broken you felt your father was showing favoritism i still remember that feeling in the pit of my stomach did you confront them have you been listening to what i've been saying kids don't confront in my family but how does this and they shouldn't because <laughs> his amusement park was where i found out that my father wasn't like other fathers i took the bus this time it's three transfers from newark I had this candy bar in my pocket, and 
sand or lint or something on it. Hey, what you doing? Where you spin? What do you mean? I ain't doing nothing. Yes, you did. You threw that rap on the floor. Pick it up. Leave me alone. Come back here. You got to pick it up. Oh, God. His name was Chicky Sasso, my father's cousin on his mother's side. He got out of Vietnam on account of the cops blew his kneecap off. What's the matter with you cops? You can't bring your kid to an amusement park no more. Daddy! Daddy! Okay, baby. It's okay, honey. You go on the mommy, sweetheart. What was he doing? They don't want you to burn it down, no it. As I said, there's got to be more to it because it can't be that he was just playing favoritism like that. There's got to be more to it. Is that the last time he saw his dad? My sister Janice is a front. All the guys brought their daughters so that when they did their business, it looked sweet. Ah, uh, must have been devastating. Man, turned out it was no big deal to see your father handcuffed, being led away by the police. Well, at the time, I thought my head was gonna explode. Look, helpless. But when I got home, my mother had a different perspective, which made me feel better. So, in her pain, she reached out to you. One way to put it. Your father may not be home for dinner tonight. Go wash up. I know. What do you know? I saw him getting arrested. What did he do? They didn't do anything. They just pick on the Italians. Phil. Oh, really? My, <laughs> my father was no freedom fighter. So he went to jail? No, he came home in a couple of hours. Hey, Johnny boy. Hey. Good for you, Johnny. Show those fucking sons of bitches. What's up, Rocco? Ah. So, everything okay here? I don't understand. The man your father beat up was the same one who was congratulating him? Yeah, one of them. Marco Alatore. Why did they arrest your father? He was in violation of his parole. Association with known undesirables. <laughs> Nothing ever happened about it. it just kind of went away. He'd been in prison. Yeah, he was away when I was a little kid, but they told me he was in Montana being a cowboy. What? My son is doomed, right? Why do you say that? Come on. This is the part when I'm supposed to tell you how terrible my father was and the terrible things he did to me and how he ruined my life. But I'll tell you something, I was proud to be Johnny Soprano's kid. When he beat the shit out of that guy, I went to the class, I told him how tough my father was. Do you think that's how your son feels about you? Yeah, probably. And I'm glad, I'm glad if he's proud of me. But that's the bind I'm in, because I don't want him to be like me. He could be anything he wants to be. He could be like um, this guy I know in high school. His grandfather invented these little ties that go on the end of salamis. He made millions of dollars. He's sitting on his ass. Have you communicated any of this to your son? Not in so many words. Probably not at all. And what difference would it make? You said so yourself. It's in the blood. It's hereditary. Genetic predispositions are only that, predispositions. It's not a destiny written in stone. People have choices. She finally offers an opinion. Well, they do. You think that everything that happens is preordained? You don't think that human beings possess free will? How come I'm not making fucking pots in Peru? 
You're born to this shit. You are what you are. Within that, there's a range of choices. This is America. Right. America. <laughs> so, Olivia, what do you think? Huh? Oh, kings and misfits, that's who goes there. Losers. The Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, <laughs> so now Rocco Alador's a loser? I know I've had to rough Rocco up because of money, but that guy's got a fucking brain. He's gonna open a new book out there, and after that gets up, we get a little cash flow going. Oh, I mean... Mr. Cash Flow, big businessman now. Well, what do you know about it? You're scared of your own shadow. Reno is growing by leaps and bounds, <sighs> Livia. It's a chance to get in on the ground floor. After Rocco gets the book up, he's gonna open a new supper club. He wants me to run it. A supper club? Are you drunk? Oh, Perlamon on the Jesus Christ on my fucking albacore around my neck. Every time I try to do something, me and the kids will go without you. They are not going anywhere. I'd rather smother them with a pillow than take them to the theater. Always with the drama. Yo, that mom was something, bro. Like, throughout this entire show that I've been that I've been watching so far, the mother. Yo, she did, she was doing some, she was saying some wild stuff back to these kids. Like, well, not the daughter, but stuff that Anthony saw and heard from her. Bro, she's like, I'd rather smother them with a pillow than bring them to Nevada. You don't say stuff like that, especially so loudly in a house you got with two kids. Even if you're not going to do something that, or you don't mean it literally, you don't say stuff like that because kids will misconstrue stuff that you're saying especially when they don't they can't really you know what i'm saying like as he got older he understands that she didn't mean it literally but kids hearing that at that at such a young age they're going to develop a, a sort of fear for you those are the kind of things that make kids want to run away from home is what i'm saying Olivia, there you are oh jim we still hear you dead i can't say but i didn't want to let another day go by Business headaches like you wouldn't believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, you and the other one with all your headaches. Who, Tony? You shouldn't be so hard on him. He's got a lot to learn, granted, but he's headed in the right direction. Where to? Overbrook State Mental Hospital? What? What did I tell hey, you? Uncle Jude, how you doing? <laughs> what did I tell you? You knew she was going to tell Junior. He's keeping his head. You see what a good boy he comes to visit his mother? Um, my son's staying for dinner, Junior. I don't suppose you have time. Ah, uh, you two want to visit each other. Yeah, Junior's very busy these days with his headache. <laughs> Not too busy to shoot the shit with you, Tony. <laughs> we gotta try and catch a ball game. Yeah, you got my number. All right. That man so full of himself since becoming couple regime. He makes me sick. Really? You might as well be running the whole damn thing. Oh, why wouldn't I? You know, they moved in a lot of their billionaires now. Oh, that Rocco Alatori, he was a real good guy. Didn't Dad want to go with him? Your father? This is some bullshit. You see, you see what I'm trying to say? You see what I'm trying to say? I told you she was the biggest problem, bro. And you have no idea. And I'm not saying this in exaggeration because I want to make a point, right? Because this, it happens all the time, even today. All the time, even today. I'm telling you, the, I can give you guys a specific example of me experiencing this, this for myself when i wanted to break out and do things and i had no support whatsoever from my ex-wife like i'm talking about i wanted to do things she's she doing something oh oh you can't do that oh you think you, you you think you're gonna be able to do that blah 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 blah. you're not doing this you're not doing that i'm thinking big dreams she's thinking oh i should help her to do things first before i even concentrate undoing anything for myself you get what i'm saying and this kind of ticked me off a little bit i'm not even gonna lie because look how she's talking about them now 
She's talking about the same people who wanted to move. They're billionaires now. Dude wanted to go, and I'm pretty sure that she stopped him from going. She's the one that stopped him from going. Yeah. No. Yeah. Lying. I remember you guys talking about it. Wow. I was going to start a business. That was going to do a little thing with him. Oh, well, Rocco just got him all worked up. That's all. What is this with all these questions? I wanted to go with him. You wouldn't let him. Let him? What do you mean? You just tell me one time your father didn't do exactly as he wanted. I don't know. Maybe this was his chance to get out. But that was no choir boy, but maybe with a little bit of support, you know? Oh, Mr. Sensitive now. Well, if it bothers you, maybe you better talk to a psychiatrist. What are you talking about, a psychiatrist? Well, that's what people do when they're looking for somebody to blame for their life, isn't it? You're a real stone player, aren't you? <laughs> you threaten to smother his children. What does that mean? You know, everybody thought Dad was the ruthless one, but I gotta hand it to you. If you'd been born after those feminists, you would have been the real gangster. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. <laughs> of course you don't because old people they don't have regrets <laughs> that's just a typical thing that i notice with even my own mother and father they don't have no regrets about anything they're just like oh it is what it is <laughs> you know you go and you talk to them and it's like you know i will i will talk to my mom about certain things like my relationship with my father right how I wish it was a lot better. I wish it was different when we were younger, um, you know. And we've, we've, you know, we as his kids have, uh, have come to the conclusion that, you know, you're not going to change him now. You know what I'm saying? 70-year-old man, you're not going to change him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't got no plans to change. You know what I'm saying? So when I talk to my mom about certain things, my mom is just like, it's whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, is that a point where I just believe that the older you get, it is like these things happen and you want to talk through it. And this is the reason why, you know, so many of us, we end up in therapy and talking through this stuff because our parents are not willing to talk to us about it. And if you bring it up, you know, oh, it's too stressful. I don't want to talk about that stuff. It's too stressful for them. You get what I'm saying? Never mind that you want to have some sort of inner peace and not have any kind of resentment towards them about this stuff. You get what I'm saying? So for me, it's just it's just like I feel like as a kid, it was necessary to keep some things away from us. But as but at the same time, there are certain things that as kids, kids internalize these things. And, you know, um, it might not be good for us in the long run. I'm not saying that, um, that, you know, this one thing or this particular thing affects kids, everybody the same way. Cause that's not where I'm going. Cause I don't believe in that. I believe that, you know, um, the way how you raise your kids and help them to understand certain things are the way how things go. Some things that parents do are completely inexcusable. You get what I'm saying? You just, you don't say those kind of stuff around kids. You don't threaten kids with death. You get what I'm saying? You don't threaten kids by threatening to kill them. You don't say th that stuff with them. You can tell them, hey, I'll beat your ass. Stop, stop acting up. I get that. But to say, to go all the way to be like, I'll kill you. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like saying things like, um, you know, a classic <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a classic, like, I brought you in this world, I'll take you out. I would never say that <laughs> to my kids. You get what I'm saying? Because I think that is just going too extreme because your kid, as much as you might think that your kids don't think you might mean that literally, they will take it literally because they don't understand. You get what I'm saying? Like, they don't understand. They don't rationalize things the same thing an adult does. So you just don't say stuff like that to them. You get what I'm saying?
You get it? That's also what I'm saying. It's just like certain things you want to talk out as you get older. And your peers, they just, they just don't want to talk about it. They just don't want to talk about it. Because they feel like they did everything to the T. To the T. <laughs> Correct. When they were brought, bringing you up. Let's get to it. The good news is no evidence of learning disability. Cognitive function, verbal and nonverbal intelligence testing, arithmetic and reading evaluation, all within the normal range. Oh, thank goodness. Got a clean bill of health from his pediatrician, no soft sign on the neurological either. All right, well, that's all the good news now. Why don't you tell us the bad news? Well, as to whether Anthony has ADD, the results were interesting. The APA standard is for the subject to manifest six out of nine possible symptoms of ADD. In testing, Anthony manifested five of those symptoms. Five? Really? He often has difficulty awaiting his turn, is often quote-unquote on the go or acts as if driven by a motor, often interrupts or intrudes on others, and often fidgets with hands or feet. He fidgets with hands or feet. That's right. Do I have ADD? You mean <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this like that that's the reason why I don't like when people talk about ADD because it's the dumbest diagnosis ever. You know how many kids back in the day was diagnosed with ADD? That's why you had all the, the Ritalin stuff, right? ADD is, it's such a dumb diagnosis. I don't mean to intrude on, you know, if you're out there, you're watching me and you're a doctor or whatever, but I think it's one of the dumbest diagnoses ever. You know what I'm saying? They said Joyner Lucas, Joyner Lucas was diagnosed with, with, with ADHD. You get what I'm saying? Joyner Lucas. Guy, if you don't know who that Joyner Lucas is, look him up. Successful businessman, successful rapper. Dude can rap his ass off. One of the best rappers out right now. Right? Putting words together. Doing all of that stuff. And you're trying... And, and, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get this ADD stuff. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, none of those things are bad. That she just describes. He fidgets. Are you serious? He fidgets. He interrupts people when he talks. Are you serious? I interrupt people when they talk. I don't always wait my turn to talk to people. That happens sometimes. For the most part, I'm pretty patient. But there are some times that I interrupt people when they talk. I'm not perfect. I don't do... Are you serious, man? These are the, the symptoms of ADD? <laughs> Bro. Uh -huh. He fidgets. That's a sickness, the fidget. <laughs> Mr. Soprano is one of nine possible symptoms. Oh my God, bro. What constitutes a fidget? What? Yeah, I would love to know too. Tony. No, no, what constitutes a fidget? Yeah. I mean, so what if he fidgets? He's in school. Who doesn't fidget in school? And he doesn't wait. I for fidget. Him. I'm he sitting. He gets a heart on every 10 minutes, for Christ's sake. Anthony. What am I saying? It's the dumbest thing ever to all these things that, that kids are not allowed to do because he fidgets? I'm sorry for pausing so much, but this is triggering the hell out of me because I remember when they, when they diagnose somebody that was close to me with ADD. I'm like, dude, nothing is wrong with you. What do you mean? What do you mean? This is my exact reaction to this stuff. This is my face. Perfectly, perfectly like, huh? W what is this? Are you serious? So, so normalcy is considered mental health issues now. It's, it's, it's the age we live in, man. We're, it's, it's ridiculous, dude.
It's ridiculous, man. ADD is one of the stupidest diagnosed mental illness of all times, bro. Because it's dumb. It's dumb. Normal things that people do are considered bad or wrong. It's ridiculous. So why twitch? Me sitting down here watching this show, you guys may not see my hand, but every like, probably like five minutes or so, I'm cracking my freaking fingers. You probably don't hear it in the mic, right? Because my hands are low, but I'm constantly fidgeting. I'm constantly crossing my legs and putting them back down when they get tired. I'm constantly moving. I'm constantly turning. Do I have a a ADD? Like, this is ridiculous, dude. So you have to you have to have six of the symptoms to be considered ADD. But the symptoms just doesn't make sense is what I'm trying to say. There's so many things that I do when I'm sitting down editing and, and stuff like all of that stuff that that she just described is stuff that I do. Even me as a 35 year old man. It's stuff that I do. So do I have ADD? I mean, this is ridiculous, bro. Is a borderline. Borderline <laughs> mental issues. That's the trouble with you people. Every time you see a problem, you turn it into a disease. He's a kid who made a mistake and he's gonna pay for it, but he's gonna be fine. Come on. It's ridiculous, dude. Ridiculous. Frankly, I think he's right. And I don't think we should have to pay for this testing either. It's the truth. It's the truth. There's so many kids that get back in the 90s and even till now still getting diagnosed with this ADHD, ADD crap. It's so dumb, dude. You have teachers telling kids they're not going to am amount to anything because of this. Bro. Look up the history of that. Uh, the history of it. I, and Ritalin. Because that's what they was putting the kids on. Anthony's going to be fine. He gets into trouble. <laughs> He's depressed. Yeah, life isn't fair, buddy. <laughs> Welcome to life. It ain't fair. And you're a kid, you do something, you needs to be punished. <laughs> I don't know how people eat ice cream with all that stuff on it. Like, I like my ice cream plain. Maybe I'll put some Oreo cookies in it. But I can't even eat that stuff anymore. But it's crazy. That boy going to be fine. It's ridiculous, dude. Get that stuff out of here, man. Every kid having a little bit of issues. I mean, he stole some wine and, and, and got drunk. All of a sudden, he's ADD. Like, this is ridiculous, man. And they, they specifically put that in this episode to show how dumb it is. It's so it's such a dumb diagnosis. I don't care what nobody has. I don't care what no medical professional have to say about this okay i think it's a very dumb thing to be diagnosing kids with this mental illness you get what i'm saying it's it's so dumb 
it's so dumb, bro. Because the symptoms, it's just ridiculous. Like, how can you even... <sighs> Anyways. Yeah. All right, so that was episode seven of the sopranos i don't know it's august 21st and for some reason these people are out here doing fireworks in the neighborhood right now i, I mean if i wasn't triggered enough already by this damn episode <laughs> you know but great episode nonetheless to kind of put certain things on display about tony and his family um it's just it's great when i see media do stuff like this because it just goes to show you that they know what they know the problem you know and they see it as a problem and you know they can put it in a art form that helps us the audience to understand that it's a racket dude it is a racket add is a racket it's a racket man like it, it, dude it got so crazy back in the day till it even got to my country bro because back back in those times i wasn't i wasn't in america yet but we heard about this stuff like kids you know kids in jamaica getting diagnosed with no add that's regular stuff kids acting up kids doing stuff eh, that they're not supposed to be doing stealing um shoplifting like are you serious so we're, we're not human anymore <sighs> it still goes on to this day but not at the rate that it was in you know in in 80s 90s up to like probably like the early 2000s it's not as rampant you know what i'm saying like so many kids got diagnosed with add or adhd whatever they they want to call it i think it's a bogus diagnosis i don't think i i think I, I think it's bogus in, in a certain terms as how, how fluid the symptoms can be, I should say, how fluid it is, it, it just, they just go with the flow, you know what I'm saying, so it's a, I'm not saying that, you know, they aren't anybody out there with this mental illness, is not what I'm saying, because there are some people who legitimately have this illness, but I think it's too loose. I think the symptoms are too loose to diagnose. Listen, guys, you guys don't understand, man. When you get diagnosed with, with, with something, especially a mental illness, that shit stays with you for life. It stays with you for life. You understand what I'm trying to say? It stays with you for life. Legitimate or not whether it was a legitimate diagnosis or a wrong diagnosis it stays with you for life it's not a joke and that's why when i hear so many of these people today as soon as they're having a little problem they're talking about oh i i have to deal with my mental health and i'm just like guys let, let, let's cut the crap man Let's cut the crap. If you couldn't handle, if you can't handle the pressure, you can't handle the pressure. You need some time off, just take some time off. But don't come out here talking about you have mental health issues because it has nothing to do with that. And a lot of times, as there's so many people today in this day and age, especially with, um, I see this a lot going on today in sports. I'm not saying that these people don't have mental issues that they need to help with. Because sometimes you do need to take a, take a step back to recuperate and get back in it. But I don't believe that that is mental issues. I think, I think, I think, I don't think it goes that far. I think when, when I talking about mental issues, or maybe I'm just thinking about it in the extreme extreme at all times and the minor stuff that do, just doesn't matter to me. You get what I'm saying? Certain things like people talking about stress. Stress is stress. You can't live this life without it. 
No, nothing in life, nowhere in life, nobody in life can live a stress-free life. Even if you are a billionaire that has the most money on earth, you will still have stress in your life. No matter what stress is, it's just a, it, it, it's, it's just a normal thing that happens to all of us. Okay. That's why when you, when I hear people say they can't handle stress, sometimes I tell them, Hey man, take a step back, take a step back, take some time off, whatever you need to do to recuperate, get out of that overwhelmingly stressful environment and recuperate. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes that doesn't work for everybody. You get what I'm saying? Or go talk to a, a psychiatrist. Get some shit off your chest. You know what I mean? So for me, it's just, for me, it's just, you know, I'm not a medical professional. I didn't go to no medical school. I didn't go to, to none of this stuff or to learn about this stuff. But I think a lot of this stuff is just, it's too fluid. It's too fluid. It's too... It's just too easy. The symptoms just doesn't make any sense. The symptoms are just normal things, man. Just normal things that people go through that people has been dealing with since the dawn of time. All of a sudden now we come now in this day and age in these modern times talking about, oh, that's a sickness. Like, like we've survived this long. As a species. I mean, seriously, but otherwise, man, this episode was a very good episode. I enjoyed it very much, even though it triggered me a lot. We learned a lot about um, Tony's mom and how she handled things when she was a kid. That thing kind of tipped me off to the way how, you know what I'm saying? Not to say that, you know what I'm saying? His father, Johnny, was, you know, some cream of the crop dude, husband, boyfriend, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was still involved in legal stuff. But at the same time, you know, you could be wondering if he could have been doing something else. Same thing Tony is wondering. I could have been something else. Because now that he actually thinks about it, that, that could have been his way out. They could have been billionaires legitimately. Because the, the, the dude, Rocco, was moving to, to, um, to Reno or Nevada, right? Moving to Nevada to start a business and let Tony run it. Not Tony. Johnny. And she completely stopped it because, hey, oh, you're going to be a, a, a businessman now? Bruh, you have no idea how much of that I went through when I was in my marriage. It's like the doubt. And when the person that you're supposed to trust the most is telling you that they don't believe in you? That's the kind of stuff that affects you mentally, man. Y'all don't understand. Your moms, your dads, sisters and brothers, if those people are in your life and, and you trust them because you see them succeeding and then they're telling you that you're not going to succeed, that's the kind of stuff that affects you mentally. That's the kind of stuff that when you get older, you're wondering why you're doing stuff a certain way and you don't even understand. And that's why you might need to go talk to a psychiatrist, talk to somebody, therapy, get some therapy. I'm not against therapy. I'm not against it. I feel like some people just don't have nobody to talk to sometimes. And that's why I open up my discord. If you guys want somebody that you could talk to, I'm no therapist. I'm no therapist. You get what I'm saying? I'm no therapist. I'm not claiming to be a professional therapist or anything like that. But I feel like I've helped people in the past to overcome certain things about themselves just by listening, just by listening and maybe make a suggestion. Just by listening sometimes, sometimes people just need somebody to listen to what they have to say and what they're struggling with. Sometimes that's all it is. You get what I'm saying? So it's a very interesting episode, man, with, with his son and stuff like that. And I said, Anthony, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. I'm not worried about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, look how, look, look how fast that, that could have just completely damage that kid for life just because of that stupid diagnosis could have just damaged him him believing him believing that he's sick him believing that he's mentally ill it, it's just crazy to me 
how willy-nilly it is for them. He fidgets? Are you serious? Man, come on, bro. I'm out, man. Leave a like on the video. Leave a comment. I will catch you guys later, man. Peace.